Hey there, I'm going to show you how to run Fruity Loops, um, not exactly as a rewire, on a Mac. Um, it's jumping through a couple of hoops, but it's not that hard. Um, so let's get started. Need to download first Soundflower if you don't already have it. Please download it from GitHub. Um, you might find like Softonic or other sites and it doesn't work. To download it, you click Download Zip. Once it downloads, then you open it up. It's not very big, doesn't take very long, and you go through all the things to do, and then might have to restart your computer or something like that. It's been a while since I've done that. So I'm going to quit this just because I'm done here. Now, yep, thanks. So I'm going to go and open up Ableton Live first. While this is opening, I'm also going to go into my audio MIDI setup. Um, and this is, of course, after you've installed Soundflower, it will show up here. You're going to want to um, make sure that everything looks good, that everything is installed here. And once that is, then you're good to go. Oh, forgot. There's another thing. In your MIDI network area, there should be an IAC driver. Just make sure that it's there. But it should be there. Okay. In live, let me get rid of some stuff. Now I'm going to go into my preferences, and for my output, I am going to choose Soundflower, and for my input, I'm going to choose Soundflower, and it should show up there. For MIDI, I'm going to make sure that the output of my IAC driver, bus 1, is set to track on. All this is going to do is send MIDI notes. It's not going to let me MIDI map or MIDI control Fruity Loops from Ableton. But that's all I want to do for this. Once that's finished, open up the Wine version of Fruity Loops 11. Hopefully when 12 comes out, they actually do a proper Mac port and everything. Well, it's not a port, like an actual native Mac um, version. I honestly, I've I received Fruity Loops 11 a while ago, and I'm not really an avid user of it until I figured this out. Um, I just I was tired of looking at it over here on the side without being able to use it. And I've heard about Citrus and other things, and if you know Fruity Loops, I don't know it, so you can laugh at me because I don't know how to use it that well. But I know Ableton real well. Um, there we go. Now this is set up. We're good to go. So we're gonna go to options and into MIDI settings. You want to make sure that you click on bus 1 and you want to enable it. This will show that it's on and once it's on that means that you'll be able to send MIDI or it'll be able to receive and send MIDI from the MIDI controller. Whatever it is and I'm just using um, I'm using a keyboard right now but I'm having the keyboard go through here I'll show you so I'm playing a keyboard right now. You can kind of hear it tap, tap, tap. But I'm going to send my output to IAC bus. And I'm going to set this to record. And now you should be able to hear. Sorry, it might be kind of loud. I forgot about that. Um, the kick coming through. Um, the reason I have it coming through right now that you can hear it is because I have it set to Soundflower channel 2. There we go. Let me just make sure that's working like it should. I think it is. I hope it is. So the cool thing is that now you can. Yep. Sorry. I'm going to go like this. There. So now you can see that I'm, there's a lot of lag. It's like half a second. It's pretty bad. But. We mostly just want to use this to um, to use some of the cool tools that are in Fruity Loops from within Ableton. So let's do an example of that real quick. Um, I'm going to go to Citrus, and I want to just. I wish I just knew how to drag this thing over, but I don't. So I'm just going to click on something. We'll just make it um, short synth. Here we go. Sure. So we got this here. Sorry, I don't know what I just did. Oh, there we go. 
<laughs> I told you. Let's see now. Um, now you see this being played because I'm pressing my keyboard right now. And that's because it's receiving input from Ableton. Now here's why this is really useful. I'm going to click record and auto for my input monitoring style. And now I'm going to, I don't, I don't have a way to hear this just because the way I'm doing this uh, video recording or screen capture. So I'm just going to play a chord, like two chords and just try my best to keep tempo. Uh, sorry if this sounds terrible. Okay. So I have, I have my little thing that I made here. I really don't know how it sounds, so don't judge. But um, basically, what I've done is I've recorded MIDI in Ableton. I have my monitoring set to auto, which means that it's gonna, it's going to play what I've done. If it's set to in, you notice that it goes kind of clear. And if I press play, nothing's gonna happen here at all. Nothing's gonna work. Sorry, it looks like I have some stuck notes there. I noticed that this happens a bit, which is a little bit frustrating. There we go, now the stuck notes are away. So you kind of have to keep an eye out over here. It's not perfect, but it's a way to use free loops and to get some of the sounds from the synths that you like into Ableton. So let's just do that real quick. I'm going to record here and I have this set to on. So now I'm going to just press record. So as you can tell, that's there's quite a bit of lag. Wow, that's a lot. Um, but again, if you're using Ableton, all you have to do is just move your warp marker and it just jumps to that transient and then you're good to go. And then you have to adjust it here, of course. There, done. And now I have my MIDI from Citrus in Ableton. So it's pretty cool. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I'll try to keep uploading cool stuff as I find it. Until then, like, subscribe, be awesome. Bye-bye.